manage our riches. And then we wonder why we struggle. And in the midst of our struggle, I can speak for me. One of the first things I was doing wrong when I was struggling was not doing right by God. Uh, because everything else, I got to take care of that. And God became an option and not a priority. And, and, and a lot of times what happens is we don't even understand that in the midst of uh, God becoming an option, God has a way to make you come up with money. And it's going to end up being more than it would have been if you would have done right by him. He'll make the car break down. Yeah, wash machine, um, children's shoes go crazy, go broken, all that. I mean, but God has a way to get here. But if we want to unleash what God has for us, and, and I'm not begging money, it's more, it's more to God than money. Um, you, you have your time, um, you have your talents, you have your treasures, and you have to be committed and faithful in all three. Now, before we get started, um, I just want to pray, and then we're going to get right into to the word. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Just a few of us have come out. For God, we want to totally live for you. God, we want to do what's right by you, for you have done what's right by your people. You blessed us when we didn't deserve it. You healed and delivered us when we should have been dead and gone. You fed us when we was hungry. And God, we may not have had what we wanted to eat, but God, we still had something. And so we thank you for being our provider, our protector. We thank you for being a strong tower and long-suffering with your people. And God, we don't want church as usual. We want to live and unlock the mysteries of the kingdom. Yes, God, so we honor you and we thank you. And God, we pray that all of us, from me all the way to those that are here and those that will come, that we will grow by your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. <coughs> Everything that, that we talk about while, while I'll be teaching, um, dealing with economics, um, definitely um, will be biblically based. Okay, now, how many people know we can do better? talking about towards God. Now look, my hand up too, okay? So don't think that you're in it alone. Uh, all of us can do better. Um, now here's the question that we always have to ask ourselves. How many people can trust God? Okay, now the question has to be reversed. Can God trust you? Because he has proved himself faithful. And so we have to say that, that if this is the God that I'm going to serve, in everything that I do, I have to prove that God can trust me. Whether it's little or a lot. Um, one, one of the things that I, I think that we, I'm going to show you something real simple. How many people got cell phones? Put your hand up. How many people got cell phones with a contract? Watch this. Sister Denard. Auntie, how much is your cell phone bill? How many phones you have on your phone? How, how much is your phone bill? $143. Two cell phones. Okay? Watch this. When Bobby and I first got married, my phone bill was $167 by itself. Bobby's phone was another $127. It's almost $300 between two people because there was a contract. And how they get us is they offer you a phone that does everything but dial itself. And if you program it right, it'll even dial itself. And they lock you in for three years or two years. And they say, now, if you want out of it, you got to pay me to come out of this agreement. I sat down and I began to, to, to budget the household bills, um, from the cable, to the lights, um, to gas, to cell phones. And I said, hmm. I went online, and I found a, a, a phone for me and my wife. And then I found a plan that's $45 a month with the same carrier 
offering the same service. And I said, honey, we coming out these contracts. So when her contract is, I put on a prepay. When my contract is, I got on a prepay. And we're paying under $100 a month, and so that means we're saving about $210 a month. But it's all about prioritizing, budgetizing, so that you're not just paying for stuff, but you can afford stuff. And, and there is a big difference. Same thing when it comes to gas. When the car get to half full, I don't $10 here, $5 there. And I understand that sometimes we have to get to that place. But if you fill it up, you're going to get better gas mileage. And when it gets down to about half a tank, fill it back up. There are certain things that we do that overextend ourselves. And the first thing that goes short is the God that we serve. That's the reason I said that. Now, the first thing I want to do is take you to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. When you have it, say amen. Because the first thing we want to do is we want to live by what we make. You can't live like that. That's the old you. Okay? Look at verse 4. But he, speaking of Jesus, replied, it is written. Because we're living by the word. Everybody agree. It is written that man shall not live or be upheld or be sustained by bread alone, that if we're going to live, we got to live by every word that cometh out of the mouth of God, which means if I'm going to live, I have to understand that God is bigger than my paycheck on Friday because, believe it or not, when we get paid, that's just something to keep us existing. But if I'm going to live, I have to live by what God say. And, and so now the next thing is, if I'm going to live by what God say, that means I have to go after the things of God. You don't believe me? Go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And, and, the, and the sad part of it is, we think that it's hard, but it's easier than we think. We just have to, have to bring our flesh up under subjection, and we have to discipline ourselves. We're, we're not disciplined. We make $5, we spend 6 it's Because we're not disciplined. God did not design us to borrow. <laughs> Y'all know this. So if I'm supposed to be a lender, why am I living beneath what God said? And it said that I'm supposed to live out of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Did God put me here or did I put myself in this predicament? And we can blame everybody. Oh, I had a bad relationship. Oh, when that home left, left me with all these children, I was working part time. But if I'm living out of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, I will live even though my money says that I don't have, I don't make enough to have what I got, but because I'm living by what God said. And so we have to really trust him even when the zeros don't add up. Okay, now, what I said, Matthew chapter 6. Come on up, Coop. Matthew chapter 6. <clears throat> Verse 33. But <laughs> what number? He's supposed to be first. Not your not my light deal, not my car note, not my boo, not my honey, not my nails, not my hair. Watch this. 
Because according to what he said, he says the first thing that has to happen, I have to be a priority. I will not settle for being number two. If I'm going to give you my best, then you got to give me your best. So he says the first thing that has to happen is you have to go after things in the kingdom first. But you can't go after things in the kingdom and you don't have a relationship with the king. Y- y'all with me? So the first thing is, is it, it'll read, if you go back to the translation, it'll read like this. But, but seek ye first the king along with his kingdom. Because there has to be a king if there is a kingdom. He says, now, not only do I have to seek the king, his kingdom, but I have to seek his righteousness. Not what I think that is right, but everything that he stands for. Those are the things that I, I have to do. Now, I get the king, get my relationship with the king. I be about kingdom business and I be about the righteousness of God, then he says, all that stuff that that been being a priority to you. Now notice, notice, look at look at the verse. He says all these things. He did not name what the things are. Now, let me bless you. The reason he did not name them, because they are innumerable. Which means that's why the scripture says, Paul said, that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly. Above all, you can ask according to the power that worketh in us. Where the power come from? It come from the king. That's the power that works in us. And so he says, now what? All these things will be, watch this, given. All these things will be paid for. (laughs) Y'all got it. So while we're trying to get stuff that God want to give us, you find out that not only can I not afford it, I can't even pay for it. Because I'm trying to get it without him giving it to me. Okay, real quick, go to go to Proverbs 13. So the, the reality, the reality of it is that it is a process that we have to go through that we really have to begin to ask ourselves, am I really going after the things of God? Am I? Am I going after the things of God or am I just going after things? And there, there is a difference. Can I can I show you how to how to get rich before we go to Proverbs? Go go over, step over back back up some more to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, but keep Proverbs. Go to Deuteronomy. Chapter eight. Yes, sir. And when I give you this verse, I want you to read this verse every day. When you have it, say amen. Good. Just one verse. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Well, let's go to 17. It says, and be aware lest you say in your mind, in your heart, my power and my might of my hand has gotten me this wealth. Don't think that you did anything. Whether you're doing God right or doing God wrong, whether you dodging your bill collectors or, or whether you're able to pay them, regardless of what it is, don't think you did it. Whatever you got in your pocket is not yours. Okay, but here it is in verse 18, he said, but you shall remember the Lord your God. Here it is. For it is he who gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant 
which he swore to your father as it is this day, which means this covenant is still alive. Okay, think about the time. The book of Deuteronomy, written during the time of Moses. It's in the, in the book of the book of the laws, the Pentateuch. It is called, there are certain laws that have been fulfilled. All the laws have been fulfilled except the law of God. There are certain covenants were, were for certain times, certain area, eras, but then there are certain covenants that are for humanity. If it was a, a covenant that was fulfilled, um, there's only, I know the Pakistani covenant is, is, uh, has been fulfilled. Um, the covenant dealing with Israel and the land that they were supposed to get, it has been fulfilled. But the covenant of Moses, the covenant of Abraham, the covenant of David, the covenant that um, Christ made, the covenant of grace or the dispensation of grace, they have not been fulfilled until the day that Christ returned. So when he starts talking about it is God that gives us power, or gives us ability to, um, to get wealth, we obtain that covenant through Abraham. Because once we came into Christ, we became seeds of Abraham, which gave us an entitlement that every covenant that's still alive for the children of Israel, now that I have been grafted in by the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm entitled to it too. And notice what he said. So he says, as it is today. So if I'm going to get wealth, or if I'm going to get the ability to get wealth, it is God that's going to give me the ability, but God is only going to release the ability if I seek him first. Listen, it's not about going to church. It's not. It's not about our positions or what we do within a ministry. Because the first thing I understand is God ordained families before he ordained his church. So if which considers this, when he started talking about it is God that gives us the ability to produce wealth or make wealth or be wealthy, it, that means God made us wealthy at home before he made us wealthy in the church. When you met God that wasn't in church, it was somewhere in a club or somewhere underneath a bar, somewhere you were drunk and just didn't want to drink no more. You got enough of yourself and you figured it had to be something else. So if God developed your relationship outside of the church, what he wanted to do with you and do in you, he do it outside of the church so that when you come, you're not distracted by folk. So he says, I'm going to give you the power. He said, I, I, I have sworn this. In other words, I'm in agreement with myself. Now, this is an unconditional covenant. There's nothing that you have to do but be a believer. That there isn't. And when he says, when you start dealing with the word ability and the word produce, God will give you ideas to get wealthy. You ain't got to step on nobody. You ain't got to hate what somebody else has. God, God will just give you something that you just, just nothing to you and make you wealthy. Watch this. I want to show you now. Here's our problem. Go to Luke, what I said before we went there. Proverbs 13. Let me show you something. It, it blew my mind when I, I just started reading. Proverbs 13. How many people um, 